Assalamu alaikum and welcome everyone to Bedtime Stories. Welcome everyone. How are you feeling today? Very good. Now, have we brushed our teeth? Are we comfortable in our pyjamas? Let's get ready for Bedtime Stories then. And where did we um, leave off last time? Can any of you remember? I think the last story we read was oh, such a long time ago. Can any of you remember? Let's see. So we was, I think we finished the story of Prophet Shuaib, didn't we? Yes, so we are on the next chapter called The Patience Man's Miracle. Now are we ready? Go and get your brothers and sisters, tell them to join you as well. Let's get comfortable. It's always important to read before bed, even if it's just five minutes. 10 minutes you can read with your younger siblings and it's good to learn and to gain knowledge. So anyway, it's called The Patient Man's Miracle from the Bedtime Stories collection. The Prophet Ayyub, or, it, or in English we can say Job, in Arabic it's Ayyub, a great prophet who lived in the 9th century BC now that's a very, very long time ago. In Hauran, near Damascus in Syria, set a great example for mankind. Apart from his great wisdom and compassion, Ayyub salam, was also a very rich man. And he had lots of cows, he had a big sheep, he had a big field, he had a big farm, and he had a large family and lots of friends. Yet, he was very, very calm, and he was very, very nice. And he was also a very good servant to Allah, and was calling for others to worship Allah. So this is Prophet Ayyub we're talking about. But Shaitan, also known as Satan, made people think it was only because Ayyub salam, was very, very rich and he lived a good life and that if his blessings were taken away, he would no longer be grateful to Allah. To put him to the test, Allah struck him with lots of calamity, calamity of bad things that happened to us. His cattle and his crops were all destroyed. Him, him and his children, his children also died. Worst of all, Prophet Ayyub became very, very ill, remaining in the bed for many, many years. He could not move, he could not do anything. Within a very short period of time, Prophet Ayyub became very poor and his friends left him one by one. So now this was the Prophet who was very rich. He had everything he wanted. Then suddenly he was tested by Allah. But Prophet Ayyub was not angry. He put his entire trust in Allah being confident that Allah knows everything. When his suffering and loneliness worsened and sickness and pain became unbearable, Ayyub salam turned to Allah in humble prayer, crying, I have overcome with distress, O Allah. I am very sad, but you are the most merciful. Allah heard his beautiful prayer and put an end to his long and terrible hardship. He ordered Ayyub salam to strike the ground with his feet. He did as he was commanded, and by a miracle, a spring of fresh water came out from the ground. No sooner did Ayyub salam take a bath in it, then his illness was cured, and he regained his health and his strength, he was once again strong again. Because Ayyub Salam, 
Ayyub salam showed great patience throughout the worst of his problems. Allah not only did he reward him with great bounty in the hereafter, but redoubled his former prosperity in this world. So he got lots of reward and he was put back to his health because he was patient and he made lots of du'a to Allah. He came so rich that it was said that he was rained upon with locusts of gold. Allah put gold in the sky and made it come down like rain on Prophet Ayyub salam. Now we've reached another chapter called The Queen's Kindness. Are we comfortable? I had to fidget a bit. I wasn't comfortable, but now I am. Are you comfortable? Okay. Long, long ago, a tribe called the Children of Israel lived in Egypt. At the time, Egypt was ruled by a very, very bad king. He was called Pharaoh, or Pharaoh, we say in English. He made the people of Israel his slaves. He made them do very, very hard work. One day, the soothsayer told the Pharaoh that a boy was born into the children of Israel. He would destroy him and his kingdom. When the Pharaoh heard this, he ordered the killing of all the newborn boys of the children of Israel. Only their daughter were to be spared. During these hard times, there lived a pious woman of the children of Israel. Her name was Ukabid, and Imran was her husband. She gave birth to a beautiful boy named Musa salam, or Moses. I think this story is really interesting, don't you? Oh my goodness, what's going to happen next? Musa's parents felt afraid of the cruel soldiers of Fir'aun. The soldiers would kill the little boy Musa. He would be killed too because Fir'aun ordered all the boys of Israel to be killed. But something unusual happened. Allah told Yukabid that your child was very, very special. He would one day became, become a great prophet. Allah promised her that the boy, the, the baby boy would be safe. He would also return to her. To save the baby boy, his mother put him in a box and floated him down the river. As the box floated down the river, Musa's sister, Miriam, kept a watch on him. The box sailed along. It stopped at a bank near the royal palace. Now, the queen of Egypt was a good and kind-hearted woman. When she saw the helpless baby, she felt great sadness and pity for the baby. She decided to keep the baby in the palace. She wanted to bring him up as her own child. And so the baby boy, Musa salam, was saved. This story teaches us that we should be kind and gentle towards others because we don't know how Allah will reward us or maybe one day we might be having some problems or difficulties and need help with something and somebody else would help us. So it's always nice to be kind to people and help them if we can, because then Allah will reward us. It's stuck again. There we go, I've got it open now. Oh. This is really interesting. Allah speaks to Musa 
Now I think maybe he's grown up a little bit now. Let's find out what happens next. The Prophet Musa salam, was brought up with loving and lots of care by the Queen. He received the best education, but because Musa salam, accidentally hurt someone, Fir'aun intended to hurt him too. Therefore, Musa, Musa alayhi salam quietly left the city and journeyed to Madian, where he met the Prophet Shu'ayb alayhi salam and married his daughter. After spending some years in the beautiful valley of Madian, Musa alayhi salam returned with his family to Egypt. They travelled slowly towards Mount Sinai, passing through awesome landscapes of the desert, the rocks. One cold winter evening as it grew darker and cool and the breeze began. They seemed to have lost their way. Musa salam, looked around and noticed a fire quite far away on the side of the mountain. He said, wait, wait, look here. I can see a fire in the mountain on the side. Perhaps I can find out where we are. Or at least a burning brand of warm to warm ourselves with because they were very cold. They were really, really cold and it was really windy. As Musa alayhi salam, reached the source of the light, Allah spoke to him and gave him wisdom and miracle. Allah told him he had to choose him as his messenger. He had chosen him as his messenger and commanded him to go with these signs and give his message to Fir'aun, who had made himself a tyrant in the land. Fir'aun was not a nice man. He was cruel and rude and horrible to everyone. This is why he was called Fir'aun. The cruel king drowned with a sense of divine mission and armed with clear signs of Allah. Musa, Prophet Musa salam, set out to Egypt as he had to fulfill the order of Allah. He also, he lost no time and with his brother, his brother Harun, went straight to Fraun's court and gave him Allah's message. The Prophet Musa salam, threw down his staff and it turned into a big snake. So he had a stick. Prophet Musa salam, had a big stick and he threw it on the floor and it turned into a snake. Then he drew out his hand, out of his underarm, and it was shining brightly. But Firawan rejected these miracles, calling them magic. Firawan called his best magicians because Firawan was so rich and he was the king, so he could hire magicians. He ordered the best magician to come and do magic and outdo Prophet Musa salam. When the magicians threw down their ropes and sticks, they looked like snakes of all sizes. Musa salam was horrified. He was shocked as the snaked, snakes seemed to coil and uncoil around him. But Allah commanded Musa salam, to throw down his stick once more. As Musa salam, did so, all of a sudden it became a huge snake. What was more amazing was that it began to eat up all the other snakes, one after the other, until it had eaten them all up. Everyone was so shocked and they were very very scared. The magicians fell on the ground with adoration, with adoration and exclaiming, we believe 
in the Lord of Musa and Harun. When the tyranny of the Pharaoh became unbearable, Allah guided Prophet Musa salam, to move out of Egypt with the entire tribe of the children of Israel. Allah knew Pharaoh would do something bad to him, so he ordered Prophet Musa to leave Egypt with his tribe, the entire tribe and children of Israel. But Pharaoh persuaded the caravan. He pursued the caravan. As Prophet Musa salam, reached the shore of the Red Sea, the army of Pharaoh came very near to crushing the children of Israel. So Prophet Yusuf was sent to protect, to protect the children of Israel. But Pharaoh was chasing them with his army. But due to the miracle of Allah, the power of Allah, the sea was split in half. The big sea was open in half. And the caravan safely reached the other side of the sea. Pharaoh and his mighty army wanted to punish the Prophet Musa salam, and all the people the children of Israel. They also set their feet on the special path created by Allah for the children of Israel. But as the army reached in the middle of the sea, the sea waves fell on them and everyone of the Pharaoh group drowned in the water. The army of Pharaoh drowned in the water. But the children of Israel and Musa alayhi salam reached the other side without drowning because Allah opened the sea up for them. The children of Israel were very thankful to Allah. They thanked Allah for saving them from the horrible king, the tyrant Pharaoh. With patience and trust in Allah, Believers can, come, believers can overcome any hardship they face in their lives as long as they believe and they trust in Allah. The horses, the army, they're all being crushed in the water. Musa was safe as well and he delivered the message that he had to deliver to Pharaoh. But he didn't want to listen, did he? What was Pharaoh doing? Can anyone tell me? That's right, he was being bad. He wasn't listening. He didn't want to follow the messenger, Prophet, uh, Prophet uh, Musa. He didn't want to believe in Allah, the Lord of Musa and Harun, his brother. So Allah guided them and Allah made a clear path for them to escape. So he saved Allah saved the children of Israel by sending Prophet Musa alayhi salam. Now, I really enjoyed that story. I thought that story was very touching and it was quite sensitive. I hope you enjoyed that story too about Prophet Musa alayhi salam and the way he became a prophet. And there are lots of more stories that I have for you, my dear children which I will continue in our next episode. But for now, I would like to say thank you so much for joining me for Bedtime Stories. If you haven't already brushed your teeth, you can quickly do that now. Get cosy in your pyjamas and get ready for bed. And thank you again. I will see you again soon, inshallah. Have a good night. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.